the American Tobacco Company. The American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes, Lucky Strike, Pell Mell, Herbert Tarrington with the genuine cork tip presents the winners of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Award, Danny Thomas, Gene Hagen as his wife, with Sherry Jackson and Rusty Hamer as their children in Make Room for Daddy. When you go dancing, take pell-mell along. The flavor's delicious, so mild, never strong. Enjoy smoother smoking that's just sweet enough. Get freshly lit flavor in puff after puff. Pell-mell, choose well. Smoke longer and finer and milder pell-mell. Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. And you get more than greater length. Fine tobacco is its own best filter, and Pell-Mell tobaccos are the finest quality money can buy. Blended to a flavor peak, delicious, and distinctively Pell-Mell. Enjoy a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette can offer you. Buy Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes in the Distinguished Red Package today. Outstanding. And they are mild. Thank you, Louise. I'd like another cup of coffee, please. Make it two. Rusty. All right, then I'll just take the cream and sugar. <laughs> will not. Okay, then I'll just lick the spoon. <laughs> well, I'll take care of that. One cup of coffee and two straws. <laughs> I'm through, Mommy. That's nice, honey. What's that for? My weekday allowance. Did you forget? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Here we are. Fifty cents. Thanks. Don't you think I ought to get a bigger allowance? I'm growing up, you know. I want no allowance. I'm growing up, too. <laughs> don't be in such a hurry about growing up. Pretty cute just the way you are. If I don't get an allowance, I'll stop being cute. <laughs> well, I think we might start you off with a 25-cent allowance, but that's up to your daddy. He'll be in for breakfast in a minute. You can ask him then. Hooray! I'm going to get my first allowance. Wait a minute. You'll get it if your daddy's in a good mood. Then I'm dead. <laughs> uh, he has been a little grumpy lately, hasn't he? Well, he hasn't been a little ray of sunshine. <laughs> well, let's hope he's in a good mood this morning. How will I know? Well, if your daddy says, good morning, he's in a good mood. And if he says, good morning, he's in a bad mood. I tell you, you better let it to me. Uh, don't ask for your allowance unless I give you the password. Oh, boy, this is like pirates. What's the password? Uh, oatmeal. Okay? Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Daddy. Morning, Daddy. <laughs> All right, what does everybody want? <laughs> What's for breakfast? Well, I thought you'd like some juice and some coffee and some toast and some eggs. Eggs? Again? Have we got anything else in this house besides eggs? That's all we ever have for breakfast. Fried eggs, boiled eggs, poached eggs, eggs on toast, eggs on French toast, eggs on eggs. Oh, Dan, you know that's not true. We have a lot of other things. We have waffles, we have pancakes, we have oatmeal. Oatmeal, Daddy, can I have been allowed? Wow. Like I get, Daddy. I want one, too. I think he's about ready for it, dear. Well, will you look at this? I work like a dog in the club all night. I sacrifice my sleep so I can get up early to have breakfast with my family, and all I get is gimme, gimme, gimme. And the only wants is a quarter. Does anybody ever think about me? You want a quarter too, Daddy? <laughs> I want a little, a little respect, a little feeling. Somebody to worry about me for a change. Give me my quarter and I'll worry about you. <laughs> Working for everybody but myself. Agent gets 10%, piano player gets a cut, lawyer, the accountant, press agent, the government. Now he wants an allowance. And he only wants is a little quarter. 
better. Yeah, a little quarter now, a little quarter next week, the week after that. One year at 25 cents a week, that, that's $19. $13. Your checkbook you can't balance. <laughs> Why do you you're such a mathematical wizard? What's the matter, honey? Don't you feel well? I feel fine. Don't I look all right? You look all right, Daddy, but you sound terrible. <laughs> Never mind the way I sound. $13 the first year. Next year you won't be satisfied with 25 cents. You want 30 cents. Then 35 cents. Then 50 cents. I'll probably be giving it to you until you get out of college. And who knows when that's going to be. Yeah, it'd be as bright as your father. It may take forever. <laughs> well, your mother can make big jokes, kid. But that's a lot of money. Five years at $13. Five years at $26. Five years at $52. You know how much money that is. $638. $638. Kid, I ain't got that kind of money. <laughs> then just give me a quarter. <laughs> said no. That ends the episode. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. Will you let me sell newspapers? <laughs> I said no. Pass the cream. Daddy, I made up a very funny joke. You want to hear it? Now, what's that joke got to do with all this? Well, if you like it for your act, I'll sell it to you for a quarter. <laughs> you say quarter. Uh, uh, here you are, Mr. Williams, some delicious southern fried eggs. I told you I don't want any eggs. Remind <laughs> me to shoot all the chickens. <laughs> Look, honey, don't worry about it. We'll fix you something else. Uh, Louise, get him some oatmeal. Oatmeal, Daddy, can I have a little? <laughs> I don't know just how to put this, but wouldn't you say that, that Danny has always been the aggressive, confident type of performer? You mean a ham. <laughs> you got my message. <laughs> I don't know, something's happened to him lately. What do you mean? Oh, when he comes out on a nightclub floor, he, he looks worried. He, he hasn't got that assurance anymore, as if he's asking the audience to think it over and decide whether he's funny or not. When did all this happen? Well, I think it happened a few weeks ago when he was breaking in a couple of new routines that laid a big egg. Suddenly, he finds himself fighting the audience. The more he fights, the worse he gets. He hasn't got that easy, relaxed feeling. He, he has no confidence in himself. He thinks he's through in show business. Jess, I'm really worried about him. No, you're worried. I got him booked in at the Copa next week. He's so down in the dumps, he wants to cancel. Cancel? That's terrible. Worse than that. If he don't open at Tacopa next week, he'll lose four weeks' salary. And believe me, I can't afford it. <laughs> we, we haven't been much help around the house lately, either jumping on him when he's grumpy, annoying him with a thousand petty things. Well, don't you worry about it. It's my problem. I'll handle it my own way. Yeah, he's probably just a little temperamental. You know, I, I never thought of Danny as an artist before, but... In his own way, he is. He is an artist. He's got as much right to be temperamental as Picasso or Toscanini. Yeah, but they don't have to open at the Copa next week. <laughs> yes, don't be funny. I've got to find some way to help him. Look, Margaret, you better keep out of it. Danny finds out you interfere, he, he'll blow his top. You know how he likes to keep his troubles to himself. Look, he's my husband, and under community property, we share everything, including trouble. After all, we're his family. We've got to encourage him, build up his ego. Hi, Uncle Hi, Uncle Hey, yeah. hi, hey, you blonde monster. Yes? Yeah? I got a new joke for you. Oh? What did the big chimney say to the little chimney? What did the big chimney say to the little chimney? Uh, I give up. What? You're too young to be smoking. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, that was the quarter. Uh, not a quarter? Not what a promoter this guy is. Give me a I wouldn't give you out. a nickel for it. Look, look, children, when, when one of us has a problem, who does he go to? The family. That's right. Right now, Daddy has a very serious problem. I know he needs money. <laughs> no, honey, it, it's more than that. He needs us, and if, if Daddy won't come to us, then it's up to us to go to him. Now, now, do you think Daddy's funny? You bet we do. He even looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right now, Daddy doesn't think he's very funny, and it's, it's up to us to make him think so. You gotta make him think he's great. You know, give him that old hammy feeling again. That's right, humor him, uh, laugh at everything he says. Even if we've heard it before? Uh, especially <laughs> if you've heard it before. A nice, big, hearty laugh, huh? 
Fall over laughing if you have to, you know? <laughs> yes. Really yuck it up. That's right. How's this, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. We don't want to be too obvious. Oh, hi, 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 funny man. Oh, yes. Well, I saw you downstairs. Must have been two other fellas. <laughs> well, you could hardly walk in the street. Everybody and his brother was out. Wrong? What should I have said? Everybody and his sister? <laughs> Daddy, you're killing me. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm George Bernard Shaw. What's so funny? Well, it's not what's so funny, honey. It's just the way that you say it, you know. Uh, uh, come on, children, you better get washed Just up. Just a minute, please. What's so funny about the way I say everybody and his sister? Ah, oh, are you killing me? Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh just then? Rusty, I'm speaking to you. Why did you laugh just then? Mommy told us to laugh at everything you said. <laughs> so that's it. Well, you were so grumpy, we were just trying to humor you. Look, Danny, we, we didn't mean to do Never it. Never mind trying to explain. The phony laughs didn't work at breakfast. So now you got them laughing up everything I'm saying, just so that you could get the kid his allowance. His allowance? You heard me. Well, he's not going to get the quarter, do you understand? Who do you think you're making a fool of? If he lives to be a hundred when it gets a beard down to here, crawls on his hands and knees, begging and pleading, he's never going to get it. Never, never, never! <laughs> Good thing I didn't ask him for a dollar. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I like you. I like you very much. But sometimes I feel like giving you a piece of my mind. You ought to be ashamed of yourself the way you treated Rusty yesterday just because he laughed at you. Mr. Williams, are you listening to me? Mr. Williams! Louise! <laughs> Why don't you give Rusty that quarter? Because I don't want it. Well, if you don't want it, just drop it on the floor. I'll give it to him. <laughs> Will you kindly let me bring up my own son? I think you got to bring up my own son. <laughs> Reward yourself with the pleasure of smooth smoking. Refresh yourself with freshly lit flavor. Smoke longer and finer and milder pell -Mell. In today's high-speed living, the smooth, gentle mildness of pell encourages you to ease up, enjoy life more, get that certain feeling of contentment. Choose well, smoke pell Tastes freshly lit, puff after puff. pell greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. Fine tobacco is its own best filter, and pell tobaccos are the finest quality money can buy. Blended to a flavor peak, delicious, and distinctively pell Your appreciation of pell quality has made it America's most successful and most imitated cigarette. So enjoy this smoothness, mildness, and fresh new smoking satisfaction no other cigarette can offer you. Get pell famous cigarettes in the distinguished red package. Outstanding. And they are mild. Hello, Daddy. Oh. Come on in, everybody. Tickets, please. Thank you. Tickets, please. Thank you. Tickets, please. Thank you. Office seats over there. Balcony seats over here. Tickets, please. Thank you. Tickets, please. Thank you. What's going on here? Well, you wouldn't give Rusty his allowance, so he's getting his own money. What? I'm putting on a show. A show? Uh-huh. Five cents each. I saw your soul, five tickets. Well, after older, he's Rusty Williams, not Danny Williams. <laughs> you mean they paid five cents a piece? Hal paid seven cents. Must he's, be an oil man. He's got a box seat. He's got a what? Box seat. Oh. Excuse me, Daddy, this is a box seat. Here, Hal. 
<laughs> I guess I'll take a walk around the block. Don't you dare! This is your son's debut. Now, now you sit down right there. <laughs> Sir, you mind putting your head down? I can't see. The show hasn't started yet. Sir, that doesn't make your head any smaller. <laughs> I paid a nickel for this seat. It's mine. Greetings, everybody. And grown-ups, without much further ado, I take great pleasure in presenting that star of radio, TV, and the legitimate theater, my kid brother, Rusty. Ta-da! Rusty, ta-da! <laughs> Danny, Danny, get up. Go see what's the matter with him. Rusty? Hey, what's the matter with you? What's wrong? I can't go out there in front of all those kids, Daddy. They won't laugh at my jokes. They won't think I'm funny. Sure they will. Where's your confidence? Don't you know the first rule for being a comedian? You gotta say to yourself, I'm Rusty Williams the world's greatest comic. Then you gotta go out there and believe it. I'm Rusty Williams, the world's greatest comic. That's it. I don't believe it. Rusty! <laughs> you gotta believe it. You've got to believe it. Otherwise, you'll, you'll start to worry. Audiences are smart. They can sense something like that. If you don't think you're good, why should they? Yeah. Why should they? So you, you go out and you look them right in the eye and you say, I'm a comedian. Why should I be afraid of you? I come from a long and distinguished line. The minstrels, the clowns of the Middle Ages, the court jesters, Shakespeare's Falstaff. I'm a comedian. We go as far back as the plays of Aristophanes. Why should I be afraid of you? I'm gonna give you the best I've got tonight. And when I'm through, you're gonna stand up and applaud and cheer. Yeah, but they've all got slingshots. <laughs> Who? Oh, the kids. Yeah, oh, don't worry about that. Now, you go on out there, you'll murder them. Those kids scare me, Daddy. I'm afraid. Afraid? My son afraid? Weren't you ever afraid? All the time. The secret is not to let him know it, Rusty. I got a good idea, Daddy. What? Why don't you do the show for me? What? I'd like them to know my daddy's the greatest entertainer in the world. You would, huh? I told them all how wonderful you are. You told them that? You bet. And besides, I don't want to give back the money. <laughs> In place of Rusty Williams, who is indisposed, I take great pleasure in presenting the world's champion entertainer, my father. Anyone who leaves forfeits their nickel. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is, Danny Williams. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you too, Terry. What a wonderful introduction. Believe me, my friends, it is indeed an honor to appear in the presence of such a distinguished audience. And the first bum who reaches for a slingshot gets thrown out. <laughs> I, uh, would like to apologize for my son, Rusty, but it's only natural that he has a little fear. After all, he hasn't faced an audience very much before and a little bit afraid you might have been cynical. You know what a cynic is, don't you? You don't? A cynic is a fella that always goes, <laughs> could be the greatest accomplishment in the world, but to a cynic, I'll give you a better, for instance. There's a fellow named Sam. Nice, lovable creature. Got a friend named Max. Cynic. Nothing pleases Max. Big circus came to town. Max went with Sam to the circus against his own will. One of the acts at the circus was the strongest man in the world. A man picked up an elephant and carried him around the arena. A man picked up an elephant. Let's have a little reaction like, ooh. Thanks a lot. 
A man picks up an elephant. See, the audience starts to applaud like crazy. Sam turns to Max and he says, Max, that's pretty good, isn't it? And Max goes, <laughs> Now, aerial artists get out. And they go on the high wires. And they go on a trapeze. And they're swinging from trapezes to trapezes, catching each other by the fingers, by the nose, by the eyelashes they're swinging. <laughs> the sensation like people are shaking the tent from the applause. And Sam says, Max, good, yes. And Max says, <laughs> Now, the greatest act ever presented on the canvas. A man walked a high wire, 220 feet in the air, with no net below. No net below, 220 feet in the air. Not only did he walk the wire, he did every position of the ballet. He balanced himself on his little finger, on his nose he balanced himself. And then he balanced himself on his head. A bald-headed man. <laughs> Are you people listening? A man, 220 feet in the air, balance himself on his bald head, and in this position, they pull it up to him, a clarinet. And on the clarinet, while he is on his bald head, 220 feet in the air, with no net below, he plays the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> Do I have to tell you that people demolish the tent from the applause? And Sam turns to Max and he grabs him and says, I'll kill you. I'll kill you, admit it. It's great, isn't it? And Max said, well, a Benny Goodman, he's not. <laughs> well, thanks. It's good to see you laughing like that, kids. Laughter's good for the world. That's what's the matter with it, you know. It's forgotten how to laugh. Everybody's in a big hurry to die. Why? Because they're busy pursuing the mighty dollar. So many people fail to take into consideration the fact that you can't take it with you. Piling up millions, and for what? I worked for a fellow in Chicago once, owned a nightclub. This man worked so hard amassing a fortune, used to eat crackers and milk for dinner, had a nervous stomach. Once I said to him, Joe, slow down, you're killing yourself. And for what? You can't take it with you, you know. He said, what? If I couldn't take it with me, I wouldn't go. <laughs> but he went. <laughs> you see, I've studied life and I've been taught that wealth is disillusion. And after lots of careful thought, I have come to this conclusion that anyone with a million dollars can be a millionaire, but a poor man can be poor without a cent. Money doesn't mean a thing to a person's mental state, because a man with seven million is as happy as a man who has eight. Any questions? <laughs> you know, anyone with a lot of dough can be a wealthy man, but a pauper can be poor when he is broke. Can money buy you romance as life unfolds its plan? Or the richness of a friendship that a man has for man, or the loyalty of loved ones, only fools think it can, and you wouldn't want to be a fool. You know, kids, when I was young, I used to dream about a fortune. As I got older, Every day, I wanted to make more money, just to stash it away, get piles of it. And for what? Not so long ago, I read a will. A will was reprinted in a magazine. To me, it was the most liberating document since the Emancipation Proclamation. I don't worry about money anymore. Not since reading this will. The scene was a lawyer's office. Relatives were gathered waiting to see how they made out. And the barrister broke open the seal, and he read the last will and testament of the beloved deceased. And it read, Being of sound mind, I spent all my money when I was alive. <laughs>
And now a word from our alternate sponsor, your dependable Dodge dealer. This is a photo taken from the inside through the windshield of a new car, not a Dodge, but a competitive car that has a so-called wraparound windshield. Notice how that upright corner post causes a blind spot which blocks out part of the wall chart. See the number 90 on the left of the post? Now here's a picture taken from exactly the same position through a Dodge New Horizon windshield. There is no blind spot. The numbers are clearly visible right up to 90. Now notice how the other car's upright windshield post sticks out awkwardly into the door frame. In comparison, the Dodge post is gently slanted for safe, easy entrance and far more graceful appearance. Now here's a competitive car's rear door frame. See that ugly wheel housing? But in the new Dodge, there's no visible wheel housing and you have easy, comfortable entering and seating. These are only a few of the many styling, safety, and performance features which make the new Dodge your buy of the year. Margaret, if you'd have been at that club last night, it would have done your heart good. When he walked out in front of that audience, he was a tiger. He had him screaming right in the palm of his hand. Oh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Certainly the best five dollars I ever spent. Yeah. Five dollars for what? You don't think those kids laughed it up for nothing, do you? <laughs> Margaret, you didn't. Five kids at a dollar apiece. Harold the Chiseler wanted two. <laughs> and why do you think Rusty refused to come out of his room? You woman, you. Daddy, you'll be in in a minute. Oh, now, now look, Jess, you've got to promise me you won't tell him anything about this. You know how Danny likes to solve his own problems. Don't worry about me. I know what a performer's ego is like. Morning, everybody. Hey, Hi, did you? Hi, Daddy. Here's Hi, some Dad. delicious southern fried eggs. Eggs, I just love eggs, Louise. <laughs> Thank you very much, sweetheart. What are you doing here so early? What do you mean? Isn't this the bus for Yonkers? <laughs> Jesse just came by for a cup of coffee and some oatmeal. Oatmeal, Daddy, can I have an allowance? <laughs> can? Let me see, that was 25 cents you wanted. Here you are, son. Dan, can you stand some good news? Sure. Just got a cable from the Palladium in London. They want you for four weeks. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> Isn't honey. that wonderful, Rusty? Let's celebrate. Have another quarter. <laughs> Jesse, book him someplace for me. <laughs> that won't be necessary, sweetheart. Here's a dollar for you. Oh. And for you, my adorable and lovely wife, here's five dollars. Oh, five dollars. What's that for? Oh, nothing. Well, the next time, sweetheart, you want to hire an audience, why don't you let me do it for you? I can get them a lot cheaper. <laughs> Honey, your mouth is open. <laughs> Danny Williams, how did you know I paid those kids? My beloved, it was quite elementary. And in the immortal words of Aristophanes, Harold was a stool pigeon. <laughs> well, folks, before saying good night, I'd like to remind you that the program tonight was brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Lucky Strike, Pell Mell, and Herbert Carrington with a genuine cork tip. We'll be looking for you next week when we'll be back for the dependable Dodge dealer in your neighborhood. Good night. Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>